que habla, soy Román González, le mando un saludo a todos los fans, bendiciones, cuídense. Just shameless plug, go down the comment section, all right, you'll see it, and go to the official True School Sports merch store to get yourself a hoodie like this, or a tank top like this, it's great stuff. If you, if you get one of these True School Sports shirts, I guarantee you, your, your success with women will, go, will, will quadruple, guaranteed. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, save the date, October 23rd, Mexico City. It has been announced by Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing, The Zone, all parties involved that we're going to have a massive uh, super flyweight slash flyweight triple header out there in Mexico City. Now, Great fights all around the card. I, I I really truly believe that this had a chance to be the f the, the best card of the year. I mean, I, I I didn't think we would see a card this great. I mean, I knew that there was reports about it. I heard reports about all these guys fighting on the same card. But it's one thing to hear reports about some, something happening in boxing, and it's another thing for things to actually be finalized and be you know signed, sealed, delivered, you know, on black and white paper in boxing. And, and this is great to see. So October October twenty third in Mexico City, uh, you're gonna have Carlos Cuadras and Juan Francisco Estrada, Gaia Estrada, they'll be in a rematch. Um, they had a fight in 2018. I think oh yeah, Estrada won. Estrada won that fight. looked looked pretty good, but um, you know, Cuadras still a, a, a very a very capable fighter. You know, he's 30, 39, three and one. Uh, he's only lost to, to the best fighters in the world, and he at one point himself was the number one fighter in this weight class. He was once the undefeated WBC champion. That this 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 is the man that. Charles Tito Gonzalez had to move up and fight in his first fight in his fourth weight class on no tune-ups, you know. So, Gaiwish, um, Carlos Cuadras is still a capable fighter. He has, he has in his in his career, you know, been going through some things. You know, he had to enter into a uh, rehab for substance substance abuse, you know, after he lost to uh, McWilliams Arroyo. So he's had to, he's still dealing with his own things outside the ring, but he's he's battled his way to to, to get back to this point. From the guy with Strata side of things, he's got to obviously win this fight because he's the man in most people's eyes right now. It's not Chalatito, it's not Chalatito Gonzalez right now. It's not, you know, Quadras. It's not Rungbasai. He's the man. So it's, he's got to really maintain uh, that number one status. And it's always hard when you're number one because you're always going to get the other fighters' best efforts. And Quadras' best effort is, is, is still good enough to, to give Guy Strata some serious problems. I mean, when they, when they fought the first time, I thought Guy Ostrata, I, I thought Guy Ostrata won the fight, but... It, it wasn't like it was extremely wide, you know. Quadras was very much in the fight, so that's a hell of a main event. And then, it, for me, in my humble opinion, this gets even better when you get to the co-main event, because the co-main event, what an exceptional fight for, for, for this is. And, and I gotta tip my cap and just give this guy so much credit, because he's been such a testament to the sport of boxing. He's been such a great example to the sport of boxing. In Roman Chalatito Gonzalez. He's fighting Israel Gonzalez, the number four ranked WBA contender. And for those of you who aren't up on your boxing, who don't know about Israel Gonzalez, this guy is a, it's going to be a very tough matchup for Chalatito Gonzalez because of the fact that, you know, when we talk about Israel Gonzalez, this is a guy, if we, if we compare what he did against other named fighters in the weight class, he fought Joan and Kaz a, a couple years ago, I think it was 2018, early, early 2018. I think, believe in Kaz stopped her in the eighth and ninth round, but he was, it was, there were hard rounds, like, and Kaz didn't just, like, run right through him. And then, he actually rebounded from that fight in a major way, in my opinion. And uh, he fought Cal Yafai in, in December of 2018. And, man, I mean, this was a fight where I really thought he beat Cal Yafai. I thought um, Cal Yafai was very fortunate to get a decision. Uh, we saw the pressure of Israel Gonzalez in that fight. We saw a lot of positive things for Israel Gonzalez in that particular fight. This guy is tall for the weight class. He's five foot six, which is from 115. It's big. He throws a lot of punches. He's got respectable punching power and so that's a tough fight for Chalatito because you gotta remember chalatito has been through a lot of wars in his career he's been the rumble side fights um guy with strata fight quadras fight you know um, a lot of things that, a, a lot a lot a lot he's had so many wars in his career i can't I, if i named them all i'd be here for like 20 minutes but this fight to me for Chalatito, as much as i love the guy i think this could be a trap fight for him 
You know, Israel Gonzalez has challenged, was good enough to challenge for the world title two times. This will be his third uh, attempt at a world title, and I believe he's gonna get Chal uh, he's gonna get the he's gonna give his best effort in, in, in towards beating Chalatito. And I, I I've stood in front of I've stood in front of Chalatito. I, I'm pushing my my height is about I'm about five foot five, and Israel Gonzalez is about maybe a t an inch taller than me in, according to his listed height. So, you know. I mean, I remember, I remember in terms of my height, I was, I was, I felt significantly taller than Tolatito. That doesn't necessarily mean anything, but these things could really, um, play a factor in the fight. And obviously for Chalatito, this is, this, this is his first fight. The real TBE, Chalatito, that's what we call him on True School Sports. The real TBE, this is his first fight since defeating Kayafai, since, since painting a, a, a masterpiece. You know, performance, a puff, puff, you know, he, he, he looked like the, the Picasso of boxing in that fight against Kayafai. Uh, where, you know, he kind of like, it, it kind of reminded me of that fight, the way he performed, of when Roberto Duran fought Davey Moore. It was, it was one of those kind of fights. And Kyle fought, people want to say, it's, it, they want to criticize and, and demean and slag off the victory, but Kyle fought was, was a respectable, solid, solid fighter, not the best champion, but, um, a guy that had, had held a belt longer than any other fighter in the UK, young, you know, in his prime, and we saw what Charlotte did, did to him, and that, and that, and that goes to show, just how special Chalatito is that he could do what he did to Kayafai in such a manner. Because even though Kayafai wasn't highly regarded by a lot of people in boxing, this guy is still, uh, I think, the 2000, uh, 2012 uh, Olympian, you know, world world champion, beat Luis Concepcion. He's still a respectable fighter in his own right. So it was a great win. Um, but Chalatito Gonzalez, for the, for him, this is all about this is this is strictly about getting that. Guy I was to rematch, you know, because that, that that's the biggest fight in uh, in boxing right now for for the, for the super flyweight division, in, in my opinion, because if the first fight was a classic. You know, there's been a lot of debate within the YouTube boxing community and the boxing community at large as to who would win a rematch. Obviously, you guys know I'm picking Chalatito Gonzalez because the guy I was trying can't back him up for for a long period of time. Many people disagree, but I still want to see that fight. But that fight can't that fight can't happen, and it won't happen if both Guy was Strada and Chalatito Gonzalez don't take care of their business against Carlos Cuadras and Israel Gonzalez, respectively. So, you know, going to be a great, two, two, two great fights right there in the main and co-main event. Then you got the return of Julio Cesar Martinez. He's taking on um, Maximino Flores, and, and this is a hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. I mean, Maximino Flores is a guy that I believe in terms of names we don't talk about enough at 115. Maximino Flores and got and and Julio Cesar Martinez style wise, I think are going to be a match made in heaven. Martinez is a guy that loves to come forward and throw punches. My boy Sean to tell at, at, at the fight hype shot to him. He's one of the best in the business. He calls Martinez the combo kid because that, that's what he is. He's the combo kid. He's like you know you, you got the karate kid. He's the combo kid. He's throwing lots of combos. He's always willing to fight. He's always willing to throw it uh, punches in the center of the ring trade you know he's he's someone that i think as he continues to progress in his career he's going to continuously become a not just a a a, a fan favorite of the mexican fight fans because he's pretty much got that sewn up already but the fight fans at large because all of his fights are, are, are musty tv in terms of the style and the way he fights but the guy he's got going to be fighting across the ring maximino flores this is a guy that in his own right you know he can throw a lot of punches you know, um, he wants through 270 punches in a single round, Maximino Flores. So that's the kind of individual we're dealing with. That, that, that's the kind of guy that um, is going to be opposite of Julio Cesar Martinez. So, you know, we're going to see, man. We're, we're going to see, I think, on this particular night of boxing, a lot of great fights. Um, and I'll just give you guys my quick predictions of who I think is going to win. I'm going to go with, uh, in the main event, I'm going to go with Gaia Estrada, uh, UD. Chalatia Gonzalez, uh, late round, uh, uh, mid, mid, mid round stoppage. I'm gonna go with Martinez winning, uh, in a hellacious fight against Maximino Floyd. But then also on this card, you got Austin Emma Williams. You couple, couple, couple of notable prospects. Pretty, pretty much most of the matchrooms notable prospects. You got Austin Emma Williams back in action. You know, he's been taking a lot of criticism from people in the boxing world and myself for, for, for the sparring footage he posts. So I'm sure he's gonna come, he's gonna want, he's, he's gonna want to come out here and try to steal the show. And put on a great performance, and I, I believe he's fully capable of doing that. Good, talented young fighter coming out of Houston. You know, you got Diego Pacheco. Uh, 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 you know, shout out to Diego Pacheco. You know, he follows me on Instagram. Good, good kid, good fighter. Um, obviously, 
fantastic average, average pedigree. You know, he's someone that I think, as long as Matchroom keep moving him slowly and they keep moving him right, you know, he's going to have a chance to not just be a, a good fighter in boxing, but an exceptional fighter in boxing. Um, he's got a lot, a lot of tools and he's getting better. He's been sparring with, um, I think he sparred with Chavez Jr. And he's fought with a whole bunch of people. He, he's always posting on Instagram who he sparred with. But yeah, he's fighting on this card. And then you got Otha Jones the third. It's Otha time. You know, he's fair, his favorite fighter is Aaron Hawk Pryor. Hawk time. He, you know, Aaron Pryor used to say it's Hawk time. So it's, it's Otha time. Otha Jones the third. You know, he, he's back in action. You know, another talented young, uh, U.S. amateur standout trying to make some waves in his career. So just an, from top to bottom, there's not even one complaint. Like, I can't even nitpick this card. And complain about anything. You got three fights in the flyweight divisions in, in the super flyweight division um, that are all stylistically fantastic fights. They're gonna produce wars. I mean, just when we talk about Cuadras and Estrada, Gonzalez and Israel Gonzalez, um, and then Martinez versus Maximino Flores. Those are all three fights that could end up being twelve round wars, fight of the year type of fights. You know, so those are all great fights. And then you got three uh, really, really talented prospects to see on the card as well. So just a, 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 a big, big tip of the cap goes to uh, Eddie Hearn, Matt True Boxing, and the fine folks over there. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we criticize promoters, but we got to also, when the promoters put on fights that are worthy of, of, of praise here on True School Sports, we got to give them their praise. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you make of the entire card between the super flyweights and the flyweights? Um... I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know who you're picking and which which matchup is is the most exciting for you to see. Which one are you most excited to see um, of those three fights? You know, uh, Quadras, Guy Estrada, two, Roma Gonzalez versus Israel Gonzalez, and Maximino Flores versus um, uh, Julio Cesar Martinez. For me personally, I mean, look, it's it's not a secret. I love Chalatito. and I, and I know who I know very well who Israel Gonzalez is and what he's capable of, and and, and I know that this is a, this is not going to be no easy walk in the park fight for. Chalatito Gonzalez. If anything, to be honest with you, if anything, this fight might actually be tougher than his last fight against Kalia Fai. Because, like I said, I thought Israel Gonzalez should have won that fight against Kalia Fai. Many people, many people also thought he should have won against Kalia Fai. And depending on who you talk to in boxing, you could look at Israel Gonzalez as the uncrowned WBA champion. So, he's capable of giving Chalatito the fight of his life. So, I'm looking forward to that fight a lot. I'm looking forward to seeing how Chalatio Gonzalez rebounds coming off of a massive win for his career, and, and, and hopefully there's not a letdown. And um, just seeing how he deals with a taller fighter who who likes to be on top of you and pressure you, because as we saw with Rungvisai, I mean, I know he's not as big as Rungvisai, Israel Gonzalez, but he's still taller, and he has the activity to give Chalatio some problems. So that, that, that's the fight I'm most excited for, but you let me know in the comments which one you're most excited for. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, Ding. So until next time, take care, guys. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. We're at the Davy Pal. And you're watching True School Sports.